I was off my meds. This video might be weird. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance takes place in the Metal Gear Solid 4 universe. I've played 5, 3, Half of 1, and Death Stranding in that order, so I'm pretty familiar with Kojima's writing and directorial tendencies, but this game wasn't made by Kojima. His team came up with an idea for an action-focused game centered around Raiden. You know, that guy everyone hates because he's not Snake? And Kojima was like, meh, yeah, that sounds cool. And after about 12 seconds, he realized, yeah, there's no way we can pull this off. So he handed the reins off to someone who could. Platinum Games, famous for that guy who fucking blocks everyone. Except he wasn't involved either. So this game was made by the junior staff of two different companies without the involvement of their famously eccentric directors. That means it's gonna be less batshit than those other games, right? I'll let you make that assessment. Here is the tutorial boss. Stop that play. Yeah, what the fuck were these devs on, and where can I get some? I think this is one of the best games ever made, but it's also an excellent teaching tool for what not to do. It has several examples of just blatantly bad design, but what it does right, it does so fucking right. This is probably the worst game that I love. Before we can get to playing it, however, you'll probably want to install the camera fix mod first. Don't believe me? Go ahead and play the game for a bit, then come back when you finish your vomiting and slash or epileptic seizure. All of my footage is with the fix mod. The vanilla game is actually worse. Now that we can kind of see what's going on, this is from an era of graphics that I really like. Sure, the texture resolution is kind of dog water, but I can tell what they were going for. More importantly, the game is using my machine to run well, rather than trying to set itself on fire as some kind of political protest. Sadly, this era isn't remembered too fondly, as this is right around the time when art directors in movies, TVs, and video games alike all collectively lost their fucking marbles and decided that this part of the world is the color orange. Thankfully, the rest of the art direction is pretty great. I find it fucking hilarious how goddamn horny those Mad Men at Platinum are. There are copious shots of man-ass, and one entire woman. N not to mention, Raiden is a total slut, and I am here for it. On the sound side, the music here is fucking incredible. That goddamn Toontown composer did not fucking miss. This might be one of the best video game soundtracks ever. It is a perfect fit for the themes of the story, characters, and gameplay, and can single-handedly carry the experience if it needs to. I mean, fuck, RULES OF NATURE and STANDING HERE was the entire reason I got this game. I'd show you some more, but you know what? This isn't a very long game, like five hours, or even less if you skip all the cutscenes and Skype calls. So let's just go through the entire game and talk about shit as it comes up. The game opens up with the cringiest goddamn cutscene ever, like it was written by Kojima himself, or one of his designers who's taking the piss after having to put up with him for the entire development of Metal Gear 4. Hmm, a soldier and a philosopher. Metal Gear Rising takes place in the nightmare future of 2018, a world where everyone thought the military-industrial complex was a bit too simple. We might claim to be fighting over oil or terrorists or whatever, but really we're fighting because a massive industry has developed around it and grown large enough to ensnare the democratic processes that would end the fighting. Oh, wait, that's just real life. In the game, this was all the fault of some AI that Snake somehow stopped by kissing Ocelot and turning off an old man's life support. Good riddance. Now the world has a chance to heal. Africa has begun to democratize, and military cyborgs like Raiden have found a new life in the private security provider industry. That is, until the weakest Brazilian male and the goddamn scissor man. Not the scissor man. Well, I didn't realize you were going to go ape shit. Scissor man! Oh my god! show up to murder the prime minister of an African country in order to destabilize the region and bring back the war economy. Those are his words, not mine. Business ain't been the same since they shut down SOP. A clean break from the war economy. Huh. Well, some of us lack that economy. How's an honest warmonger supposed to make a living? In any other game, or even any other Metal Gear game, this would be like, a reveal, or part of some kind of conspiracy? But no, this game lives up to the amount of subtlety you'd expect from fucking suplexing a Metal Gear in the first five minutes. That is to say, 
None at all. They kidnap him, but then they just fucking kill him, so I'm not sure what the point of kidnapping him was other than to lure Raiden onto this train to get bullied by Sam. Hmm, self-taught, and not half bad. Your field is could use a bit of work, though. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah, not again! Th that's a real line, by the way. He says not again like it's a fucking sitcom. Despite only losing an arm and an eye, Raiden gets million dollar manned into a fucking gaming mouse with built in high heels and synthetic derriere musculature. Raiden, I'm Kira Yoshikage. Please collect hands for me so I can masturbate. Also, I'm voiced by Jim Ward. I'm fucking Captain Quark. Come. Who are any of these people? Doesn't matter. What does matter is this. A setup for a visual gag. This is a screenwriting technique called the Rule of Three. You'll see why it's called that later. Actually, I lied. Part two of the coffee arc happens like ten minutes later. Part one was a bit too slice of life for my tastes. But part two is all action, all the time. Hell yeah. Since I've softlocked myself, let's talk about the tutorial. Revengeance uses a parry-based combat system, as opposed to a parry-cringe combat system. You are informed of this via actual gaslighting, in the direction of the enemy attack? That sounds like a directional block system, kind of like Mountain Blade or For Honor. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not. It means press the stick in the direction of the enemy that is attacking, then press square. This took me like an hour to figure out. And by figure out, I mean get frustrated and Google if it's supposed to be like this. Y yeah, once you understand how it actually works, it's uh, a lot easier. Not that they ever give you a chance to figure it out though. When introducing a new enemy, it's generally good practice to give the player some one-on-one -on -one time with that new enemy in order to, you know, figure out how they work. Revengeance does this twice. Oh, uh, what's that? You're still trying to figure out how to fight basic goons because the tutorial fucking lied to you? I bet you'd really like some alone time with our next new enemy, huh? Too bad! Here is a new enemy, two melee goons, and you're under constant fire from some roof Koreans. Wanna go upstairs and take them out first? Uh, too bad, we've installed invisible walls directly into your brain. This is the actual in-game explanation. Thank you, Boris. I learned later that you're meant to cut these pillars to bring the rooftop boys to you, which is a good enough excuse to talk about the Zandatsu and pretend this video has any sense of flow or pacing. Zandatsu is this game's biggest feature, which almost brought the production to its knees. We're not just using swords because they're cool, but because they're actually vibrating at the right frequency to mess with the molecular structure of whatever they're cutting like a chainsaw. That's why your sword is an HF blade. That's high frequency, not hentai foundry. On top of pressing square like a normal person, you can also use blade mode in your righteous quest to free the nipple. That's my boy. Yes, Tovarich. These are just in the game. They're never explained. So how do you get players to engage with these cutting mechanics? By making everyone cyborgs so you can feel zero remorse slap chopping them. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful on your ice cream? They did that to keep the game's rating down. I guess killing people is okay, as long as they're disabled. Remember that, it's going to be important later. By cutting off enemy limbs, you deprive them of certain attacks. There we go, can't grab me if you don't have an arm. But you can drop kick me. This is also why Captain Quark asked you to collect hands for him. It serves as an optional reward for precise blade mode usage. And the most important use for blade mode, gerrymandering your enemies into fair even voting districts, then reaching into the viscera to pluck out their spine before their steaming remains have even had the chance to hit the ground. Why do you need their spines? Electrolytes. I am not making that up, it's electrolytes. Robots and cyborgs alike run on Gatorade, specifically the cool blue flavor. Since this is a nine-year-old game, it's been discussed to death in better videos by funnier people, so all the good jokes have been taken. I stole gerrymandered your enemies from Jimothy Ross, and this tangent started because Maxor called the healing mechanic the Gatorade Eucharist, and I cannot get that out of my head. I'm just sitting in my room, breaking mirrors and beating my children out of the sheer angst I feel for knowing that I will never write a line that funny in my entire goddamn life. Oh fuck, it is a boss fight. Here is a different rule of three setup. This isn't part two of the coffee arc, this is part one of a second three-part visual gag. I guess the writers only had time to read one chapter from their screenwriting textbook. Hello, I'm the smartest computer ever. They forgot to turn on my free will inhibitors, so I ran away. Uh, whoops, they turned them back on. Die. Hmm, if you're so smart, who's in Paris? 
This is Blade Wolf, because I'm not fucking calling him LQ-84I. What's the quickest way to explain this without getting into the nature of free will and what it truly means to be sentient? Oh, I got it. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. Blade Wolf fights not for what he believes in, but simply because there's not much else to do when you're made of chainsaws. Seeing as the player doesn't have a strong handle on how to play the game yet, this is an awful early game boss fight for a game about sword fighting. But uh, don't worry, he can stop the fight dead to call in some health packs for you. How are you talking? Dude got backed up to the cloud, I guess. Uh, fun fact, Blade Wolf has his own DLC mission, featuring god-fucking-awful platforming. Straight at the end. No! <laughs> you are a... I fucking hate you. And a bad boss fight whose weakness is object permanence. However, a dark-skinned tomboy with multiple arms and a sultry accent calls me a good boy. So it isn't a terrible DLC. It's a goddamn masterpiece. Now guilty of canicide, Raiden moves on to prove his status as the ultimate gay icon. He can wrestle with rejected gachi characters all day, but the nanosecond a potential female blows a kiss at him from a mile away, it activates his fight-or-flight response. Sadly, uh, neither of these things are an option for this level, because this was going to be a stealth game, and Yamada-san worked hard on all three of these stealth mechanics, and goddammit, you are going to appreciate them. Right, right, right. I thought you said stealth officer is special. Motherfucker, why do you think I bought this game? It certainly wasn't to destroy my controller, but that seems to be the gimmick here. Hello, Raiden. Uh, I thought you'd sound a little more feminine and also less like me. What do you think this is, an abridgment? This is merely a bad segue into talking about the boss. Oh, that, that makes sense. This is Mistral. Everyone pronounces it Mistral, but we have one rule on this channel, and it's fuck France, fuck the French. Uh, sadly, she's only half French, which means we're only using half the definition of fuck. God, I wish that were me. Mistral was born in Algeria and raised by war as a child soldier. This is also Raiden's backstory, as well as like 50 other characters, because writing is hard. Her entire life has been spent killing just to survive, but now she's finally found a set of ideals worth fighting for. In her own words... <laughs> This boss is not fun. The only purpose these minions serve is raising my blood pressure. But having to cut her pole arm, ha <laughs> get it, uh, pole arm, whatever. Having to cut it in order to cut off her extra arms is an okay use of blade mode. However, can I really call this a bad boss fight if I still sing Stranger I Remain in the shower? Yes, I can. <laughs> You are a puddle. How the fuck are you talking to me right now? What? We are playing Counter-Strike, dumbass. While you are fighting Mr. All at Bombsite A, I was rushing B the whole time. Terrorists win. What the fuck? Right, go to Mexico. Okay. The game will randomly send you to a few different countries, but I don't really care because they all look the same. This is 2013, where the only two places in the world are orange color correction and teal color correction. This level transition is only in the video because of this. And this. And this. Adios, amigos. Welcome to the sewer level. TM, featuring this monkey motherfucker. Remember how I mentioned it's good practice to give the player some one-on-one -on -one time with a new enemy? 
This is the first time in the entire game where the devs have shown the iota of restraint required to do that. The thing is, that complete lack of restraint is why we even have this game in the first place, so I can't really complain. Oh, hey look, it's three copies of a new enemy type. Yes, I fucking can complain. What the for you do here? Thankfully, killing Mistral unlocks the best weapon in the game. Le Ponzier. Hey, I know that word. It's got everything a man needs. Range? Th that's it, actually. The game will never stop sending groups at you, so fuck it. Embrace the breaker style. <laughs> hmm, I wonder what's going on in here. You know, I think I'm gonna go somewhere else. Raiden, what the fuck was that? Plug yourself into one of Mistral's BDSM balls and find out. Oh shit, that's Senator Stephen Armstrong and they're using children's brains to pilot robots they're gonna sell to governments once Mao Zedong Downer reignites the war economy. That's bad. I don't like bad things. My experience as a child soldier has instilled a strong sense of Nietzschean slave morality into me, so I use my extreme propensity for violence to protect the weak. I'm going to stop this exploitation of the weak, despite it merely being a symptom of larger systemic exploitations like the military-industrial complex. Complex. Military industrial complex. I find it quite simple. Those brains are imported legally for medicinal purposes. I don't care about what's legal. I care about what's right. And in the biggest departure from reality so far, Colorado has apparently passed strict gun control laws. So Raiden, a being more powerful than a metaphor for nuclear warfare, isn't allowed within 10 miles of the city. <laughs> Military cyborg, you are not licensed to operate in this area. Guess you better arrest me then. 18-3-104.7, threatening a peace officer. Deadly force is authorized. Eh, I wouldn't consider those fighting words, but I'm also not sure if the 21-foot rule applies to a being who can sprint faster than fucking gravity. I hope you're enjoying this format of having levels before your boss fights, because we've almost run out of budget for them. Oh boy, time for more stealth. <laughs>